Hey there, Silver Tongue Devil here, and in this stream we are back on In Death Unchained once again. We are looking at Siege of Heaven. We did a little bit of a stream the other week, showing off some of the tactics, some of the strategies, various bits and bobs, because it is all about tactics and strategies as far as Steve, Steve of Heaven? As far as Steve is concerned, it's all about tactics and strategies. Siege of Heaven, knowing the way to play each of the maps, is how you get the silly scores. I'll be showing that off on some of the ones that we didn't cover last time. However, for now, we're going to do something a little bit different to begin with. Uh, fuck up an intro without fucking up an intro. Steve of Heaven. Who's Steve? Right. So... What I figured we will do today is to begin with. So as I think part of the reason why I'm doing Siege of Heaven is Siege of Heaven is worth leaderboard, uh, legend points. Legend points get at me shinies and they can get you shinies as well. I always strive to try and show you things that I think are recreatable. And I try to teach them in such a manner so that, you know, there's a reason to watch me because hopefully you'll be able to improve your game. It gives me nothing but pleasure to see other people learning from me and doing stuff with it. Um, for instance, thanks to some pointers, I was destroyed in a 3v1 on Dragon Fist VR Kung Fu for the first time the other stream. I was very happy about that. Very happy indeed. So, to get my little stretch and, and workout in, we are going to do the old... We're going to chase, uh, chase time. Now, each level has sub-leaderboards associated with it. Positioning on those sub-leaderboards will earn you more if you're higher or less if you are lower. Legend points. We want as many as possible. Not many people play Siege of Heaven as a time attack, which means that the scores are reasonably easy to beat. You will see that I do not have a time attack score. Most people who play it as well don't play it in a time attack fashion. So again, I can show you with some pointers how to do so and perhaps maybe get you on the top page here with some of the others. So we're going to have a look at uh, Siege Royale first and see what we can do. Are you quite right? It is a very addictive. Why, what's he looking at buying? I'd... Dark Sword's not bad. The problem with Dark Sword is the gameplay, it does work and it is cooperative. There's better, is basically the, the factor. Now, Dark Sword for me was a stopgap for a game that I didn't know I needed, which was Dungeons of Eternity. If you haven't got that one, that one's the one to go after. And yeah. You need to start streaming, Weeble. Then you can make the rules. Then you can give out as many. You can, you could like, while streaming, you could like read out the link to people. Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> no, no, there's, there's, um, there's no channel rules here. Uh, if you have a look on my Discord, I've got 25 percenters off for all of these things but as i said dark sword is okay dungeons of eternity is much better much better anyway right so what are we going to do today so first and foremost we're going to do a little bit of a time tag this is a good way for me to kind of warm up and get back into the swang of things as far as as far as this one is concerned i know i was talking uh, don't worry dan i was talking about weeble I was talking about Weeble, but yeah, no, get, um, get dungeons. So, we are, we are going to basically do the time attack now. 
the way the first thing that I should know if you are watching this and wanting to know how to play Siege of Heaven this is not the way this isn't how you play Siege of Heaven this is how you play the time attack leaderboard which is the the most un siege of heaven like way to go so we're going to start proceedings this is just basically a wave shooter but this mode we are on a platform and we have to stop the enemies getting through here yeah in in death unchained is a very good game do not pay full price for it though the game regularly goes at 40 to 50 percent off that's what you want um dungeons of eternity is a newer game i think dungeons of eternity has a lot of what in death unchained has to offer but also has multiplayer and we also stream it on this channel and you can come and play with me so um Mm, a little i haven't been on this one before i've seen it l very similar to this this is obviously a little bit better i've seen it very similar to this on the pico the pico with the you're probably seeing what i used to see through the lenses on the pico this kind of really really colorful blurry effect and there's definitely more god rays being added to this one as well so we're basically going to be doing things as fast as possible we're not going to be too concerned about what arrows we pick at the moment what we want to be doing is killing enemies quickly the way that i do that is accuracy kind of goes out of the window and i just wang i just wang arrows in the general direction i can't even see those ones anymore uh there they are I just wang arrows in the general direction. You don't need precision in this mode. Accidental headshot there. Lovely. No, you don't. He did make it, but he was dead. Right, that's what we want. So, the whole point of this mode with what I'm trying to do is be as fast as possible note how i am not concerned about resting during my selection of arrow side of things and the reason being is the timer that is ticking in the way in the background and and notching up my score for the timer side of things is not running when you are just standing here chatting to your audience or resting your arm so if you are going to go for this it's sort of like short sharp exposure to lots and lots of bits and people uh, sorry a short sharp exposure to the mode and lots and lots of shooting of arrows we will look at the scoring strategies on this one soon but not just yet for now I'm just trying to kill everything as quickly as possible you'll also note that I am hitting that bell twice and the reason why I'm hitting that bell twice is to put the game into rage mode. What does rage mode... Ah, one well, got him. What does rage mode do? Rage mode speeds up all enemies. When you buy Blood of the Lambs, if you go for those when they when you are not missing two chunks of health you can see we're only missing one that is in essence our life bar there as enemies cross the threshold will take life it is however only a thousand gold but you should wait until you are maximizing that by getting more health back the reason why that's not important normally but it's important in this mode is because playing this way you won't get a lot in the way of score and in the way of points because you're not chaining shots you're there's no hope of getting perfects in playing it this way and the reason being is because we're going for time we we care very little for these things good Oh, nice one, Waves. You come back again. I know the first 
trip was a little bit of a disaster, but yeah, happy days, mate. I didn't know if you'd be um, coming back down quite so quickly again. Um, right, we might as well carry on. Hit the bell, hit it again to put the game into rage mode. Rage mode also doubles the en the points that the enemies are uh, worth. That's a nice gap shot opportunity up there as well. Can score you a lot of points. Now remember how I said the... Hello, Mr. Vega. Remember how I said you're not going to score a lot of points on this. There are a few opportunities. This is part of the reason why I take Tempests. Because you can kill a lot of enemies over a really long distance. You can kill a lot of enemies over a ridiculously long distance, and you can still get these double gap shots. Now, that's something that we'll be looking at a little bit later on, but double gap shots are how you score really, really well in this mode. That said, we'll, we'll cover that. A little bit of map knowledge can go a very long way in those regards. And as I said, like, there's a double gap shot there. Now, the other thing to note in this mode as well, note how I am not using slow time. And the reason being is because although slow time slows the game, it does not slow the clock. And so, because, uh, sorry, the clock carries on at the normal rate. So because of that, we do not want to use slow time in this mode whatsoever. So we would like to hit those bats. There we go. Lovely. So yeah, no slow time. Be quick. Don't worry too much about trying to chain your shots. Mm. Right. Seven down. No, six down. Some to go. Oh. The only real two arrows that I buy. Yeah, no worries, Dan. The arrows that I usually buy. That was rubbish. In this mode are Tempests and Incursions. Tempests, because I can kill enemies from really far away, quite accurately, because Tempest is like the training wheels long shot arrow. And incursions, because you can either set those up. They're the ones that are the mines. Oh, come on. Accuracy. There we go. Incursions are the ones, these ones here. Incursions are the ones that you can set up. Now, what you should do with incursions is set them up on this level. It's actually quite difficult because you've got lots and lots of points that can come to get you. In the normal levels, they just have... They usually move from right to left and they just have the one gate to go through. So you layer that up as with as many incursions as you can. And then when they get to the gate, they'll get blown up. That way they die. You don't lose any health. Uh, we will grab that. What I like to do with incursions in this is, well, remember, we're trying to kill things as quickly as possible. So you put them as far back as you can in the areas of heavy traffic so that enemies basically are constantly stepping on them and dying. They're just shots that I then don't have to take. There might be... I haven't done a time attack on this level. There might be better places to put them just there. Like, I should be capable of killing everything way before it gets too close to me. So, there is no... There is no point... Me trying... Well, are you? Gonna need some time to get that golden bat. Where are you? There you are. Probably worth it. Oh. 
Come on, come on, come on. There we go. There we go. Lord, that. <laughs> All right, I see. You've got another profile. I see what you did there. My lord. Uh, no, the, so remember, Mel, the way that I'm doing this is the time I'm going for time, not score here. You'll see why in a minute. When I started this stream, I showed the leaderboard, and I am nowhere on the leaderboard in the time category. That's because nobody plays the time category. Remember how I like to do Fletcher? The reason why I can get away with doing Fletcher that way is because not a lot of people play Fletcher, and the ones that don't, the ones that do, the scores aren't as insane as you think they can be, which is why you can get away with playing the way that I like to play Fletcher. Ooh. Try not to grab arrows. See, those, those are those mines going off, just killing random enemies as they come through the door. That's exactly what we want to see. Because they're enemies that I now no longer have to shoot. Which then speeds things up for me. Oh, I'll have one of those. Little gap shot there. I mean, that's that's fine. Everybody being, dreams of being a lord from 13 and onwards. So... There we go. But yeah, and as I said, Melissa, definitely do not play this way if you are playing normally. Normally, you're quite right. You would set, like, a couple... I always set my incursions here and on this one. And then keep these two open and make sure that I am religiously facing this way. It's this level that they get behind you. If you're going for the achievement where you don't take any damage on this level, which is actually pretty fucking difficult, there are some spots on this level that bats can come in. And bats don't have to follow these paths. They can come over the fucking rails because they fly. So on some... If you're going for that, you need to put, like, at least one there just in case bats fly in from there. At least one there just in case they fly in from there. And and on that rail as well. So, yeah, not easy. Not an easy channel. No, In Death Unchained is solo only. So, it does have some very good bow mechanics, though. And it is probably one of the finest experiences that I've had in VR. Um, as I was saying earlier, this is the this is the le the game that I'm famous for. And I'll read that in a second, weeps. Not that isn't a great shot. I'm just trying to take as many bats out as quickly as possible because bats are difficult to hit. At those extreme ranges. <clears throat> uh, sending so many incursions. Six. No, they don't set each other off, Weebs. Basically, what happens is when enemies get within... I have tested this as well. When enemies get within the radius in Siege of Heaven, when enemies get within the radius of incursion, the game checks state and then explodes one of them, killing everything within a... within a group. If you set multiple, they'll go off individually, taking out whole groups. The reason why they just kept on blasting off there is because groups weren't coming. It was just one at a time. So the other arrow that you can possibly think about taking, if you can get it cheap, is Hand of God. It's nice to have some Hand of God just to dump down so that you can kill enemies that are by the gate quickly. But if you keep on top of your life... You can concentrate elsewhere and just let them into the portal because we don't even care about killing everything in this mode. We're here for speed and using our life bar is part and parcel of that. So, right, wave 11. Now, do remember that you can go for these time attack leaderboards on every single one of these maps. One of the things that I've been doing for the last week, I think, was just literally coming on playing one of these because it is a bit knackering if you're not used to this sort of thing and doing it once a day 
Um, VR gun stocks are a good question. Yes, I do have one. In fact, I am wearing the on the. Uh, I'm using one right now. <laughs> Maybe that's that explains the t god awful accuracy. So, I'm. I've got the attachments. Oh, I'll have that. I've got the attachments on my controller for them right now, for the attach onto my gun stock. I it does it does help with aiming. I don't think it helps with fatigue because you're then all of a sudden having to almost carry extra weight in your hands as well. What you get a gun stock for is for accuracy and stability, not so much for fatigue. Fatigue you can get around if you just keep playing the same game that it is you are trying to get the levels of stamina for. That skeleton can go through, that one's not. A lot of them aren't that, that weighty. I mean, one of the things that I've got, I'll show you in a minute actually. I, do you know, the problem that I've got with gun stocks is the style of games that I play. A lot of the games that I play and I enjoy are looting shooting games. And so having to dismantle the gun stock off of yourself every time, even though my one's got like quick release magnets and you can just twist and drop everything. Even with all of that, it's gun stock off, gun stock on, gun stock off, gun stock on. And I've kind of just got used to playing. I still keep the, I'll show you. Uh, you're not going to be able to see so well. I'll take him out. There we go. That's my attachment for my controller. Doesn't weigh an awful lot, but adds a little bit of weight to it. The one that I have is the ProTube. And yeah, I find myself having to when I'm doing the looting side of things, if you're looting and looting quickly, you want to be looting with two hands. Now, you could just detach your foregrip one, keep your one here so that you can then come back into the action and loot with one hand. I like to loot fast and I like to use both hands. Although mine's got a strap so that it can be around me and I can literally get rid of both of these and it just hangs on me. It's a really good bit of kit, but I got it thinking that I would really, really need it. And the more and more VR I've played, the less and less I have needed it. So, but then there's a pretty good indication, providing it doesn't come down and KO everything of mine, is that that is the tiniest little nail. Hang on. <laughs> Let me get, uh, yeah, hang on. This is actually quite difficult to do. Uh, 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 uh. That's the tiniest little nail, and it holds the entire... You know what? I'll just rest it on there for now. And if it drops and destroys... Oh, just my batteries and my phone. It'll be fine. And yes, that's an IR caster for better... Better stuff. Yeah, it's like, for instance, the gun stock is something that I would consider using in Onward. But then, for those of us that play Onward, you know that when you drop things, it's an absolute fucking nightmare in that game. And then, not only are you having to dismantle yourself off of your gun stock, you're then having to scrabble around in the dirt trying to pick these things up. And <sighs> a gun stock to begin with did help me, but now I find it's more of a hindrance. Or rather, I don't need it anymore. But I've been playing for a very long time now, so... Hello, Mr. Popo. How we doing? Uh, hang on. So we got four, four waves left. But yeah. Right. On with the speed. So the other thing, the other reason why I increase my rate of fire like this is it's very difficult to aim and get headshots at these sort of distances. We're going to be talking about proper scoring strategy and bits and pieces like that, well, after I've finished this. But for now, it's centre of mass and I will keep shooting 
and keep shooting and keep shooting until they go. Also, by wanging all those arrows out, there's the possibility that we'll get headshots. Now, there's a lot of enemies that have got in, that have snuck in behind me, which is fine because it's allowing me to keep firing in front without having to worry about what's behind me. It's almost like I'm not too concerned about... Oh, having said that, I haven't checked my life yet. Might have to get concerned in a minute because we have taken quite a bit of damage. There we go. How bad was that? Eh, not too bad. So we can get... So this is one of the things about this whole time attack side of things. Is that we can make use of our life bar. Within reason. Because obviously, you know, if I die now, I've got to start again. So you do still need to be careful. But remember, you're going to get two pips of health every time that you grab one of those Blood of the Lambs. So it's okay to let a couple of enemies in as long as you stay on top of your health. And as for derailing the stream, mate, it's about VR. That is not derailing the stream. It's fine. <laughs> I am happy, as always, to answer questions. Especially if I can... If I'm educated and can be relevant. Yeah, we're going to have to be... I'd like to be a bit careful here. Not let anything through. There are some waves where they just seem to come from every direction. And when you're not using slow time, that can be a bit hard. No, no, that's fine, mate. That's fine. No, there is... I... Even when I'm doing giveaway streams, I don't mind chatting about other games. Why Why wouldn't I? It's VR. We all play VR. Or we're all VR enthusiasts here. So it's all relevant. All relevant. But your respectful candor is appreciated. Uh, uh, I... When you have got far enough into the level and enough enemies have spawned, you no longer have the ability to put the game into rage mode again. Be careful of that. You do need to manage hitting the... the bell. That's not off topic! Mr. Popo, that is not off topic. It's the same game. <laughs> um, let's have a look. What are you using? Best arrows to have in the higher titles. You want Volley 5. Um, get rid of Tempest. Get rid of Wrath of God. Double up on Winter's Bite. And Hand of God. Where's Hand of God? Hand... Right. So. High sight. Nah, it's still the same game, though, isn't it? So. <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to say. Look, uh, that's exactly what I was going to say. Lord. My lord. That's exactly what I was going to say, Dan. It's, it's more on topic than uh, what Dan was on about. And as I said, I'm happy to answer. So, as far as your higher cycle is concerned, go and watch my video on um, getting into the top 10, the high scoring. And that will probably break down the reasons why you use those arrows. That Even that video has recently changed. A lot of people, myself included, used to use Cat 5 until we found out that Volley 5 is a lot more damaging. And the reasons that you use those arrows are given in that video. But for the mainstay, if, depending on what your level of gameplay is, the reason why why you use two lots of Winter's Bite, Hand of God, and then something heavily damaging. Cat 5 if you like explosions and you need to destroy an area, but you should be going for Volley 5 because you get a lot more arrows within the quiver. And you've seen me do those extremely close range headshots on Orphans. In later cycles, when it's about killing enemies quickly, in Anakim's layer, if you're really close to them and dump several Volley Fives, you can take things like Knights and Archers down very fast. You basically take all of those special arrows to deal with Anakim, and then learning to use those special arrows for other things, like 
winter's bite for skeleton soldier uh, skeleton archers using hand of god just to slow a dangerous situation down and using volley five to kill orphans quickly or kill really large hp dangerous enemies quickly that's what you use the special arrows for but i'm talking sort of like i don't know you'd want that set up from about cycle well i obviously have it from cycle one but you want it from like cycle eight and onwards i would have said oh he's gonna take a lot So, as I said, note how a lot of my shots, especially on the, on the, ooh, let's go for one of them. A lot of my shots are centre of mass. And then I raise the bow up to try and get those headshots. Again, we're going for quick kills here. Uh, any of those? Yeah, those will do. But for Anakim, you simply have to learn to work the room. Simple as that. Um, I'm doing as full of draws as I can pull off. I'm doing... Um, yeah, that's full draw, so... Yes, I'm doing as... I'm probably doing about... About 90%, 80 to 90, well, anywhere from 90% upwards, I would say. Right, let's, health-wise, we're good. This is the last wave, so we might as well buy everything. Uh, put that in the wrong way. Oh, and we can't because, um, um, yes, there is more power in full, but you don't need a full strength arrow to, say, kill an abomination. And also remember as well, what else do we know about the bow? The damage on the bow scales over distance. A lot of the reason why I try and insist on making sure all of my shots are full draw is because full draw is where my muscle or neural memory or whatever you want to call it is where it is. So when I want to make those long range shots and actually hit them first time, if I stay consistent by always having a full draw, because you can't have anything more than a full draw, then if you are if your draw is full and consistent and if your placement is consistent and if your hand positioning in your bow is consistent then your arrows destination should be consistent and this is how you build up one of the most important things normally in siege of heaven accuracy but we will talk about these things don't you worry don't you worry you little cotton socks but like, for instance, even a half draw arrow at those guys will take a decent chunk of life off of them. But you don't need full draw. You don't need full draw to kill with a headshot in this mode either. Headshots are headshots regardless of... I thought I heard you too. Headshots are insta-kills regardless of anything in siege that is it doesn't matter the strength of the pull headshot is a kill shot because if it wasn't i would have gamed it by now and done lots of pissy little shots in heads to up accuracy come on come on faster 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 might have to use a bit of slow time here just so I can keep on top of these bats you shouldn't that those ones are okay try not to use slow time as I said there we go lovely so yeah again I was getting a little bit low on life and we're on wave 15 and I want to show it completed I don't care whether I get the best time. I don't need to get first. I just need to get high. As you can see, my score... I mean, for some people, that score's not bad. Not bad at all. But bear in mind, you can get into the four and five millions on this with a bit of luck, I might add. But let's check out the leaderboard that we were going for.
ninth. So top 10 first time wanging out a load of arrows there's lots of things that i could have done differently not using a little bit of slow time at the end making better use of my tempests at long range to kill enemies getting some more lucky shots at those extremely long ranges to end the levels faster but hey if you're looking for a top 10 just come and do what i did the one thing that i will say about siege royale is this is a bloody hard mode this is one of the hardest ones because you've got to defend all around you as opposed to a gate which is what we're going to go and learn what to do next P uh, the panel so as far as slow time usage is concerned the way that slow time works in this game and this is a very general rule if you can see the timer that you are working with if it's like in relation to tracking time within something, using slow time will not slow it down. <laughs> Part of the reason why I do vertical. <laughs> there you go, Mr. Popo. We might cover that one. I'll show you how to get first. So as far as... I'll, we'll talk about the horizontal vertical in a minute. So... What were we talking about before then? Or should I just talk about horizontal and vertical? Penalty for slow time. So, and this is a general rule within the game. It does differ from thing to thing. But for instance, in tournaments where you can see your time, if you use slow time, it won't slow that timer down. So whilst you're using slow time, the timer is still ticking at the normal rate, which means that you don't want to be using slow time because you are slowing enemies coming towards you and you want them closer to you because you can kill them easier and faster. In Siege Royale, or in Siege of Heaven mode, we use slow time a lot. We don't care about our time in the... It, like our time to completion in Siege of Heaven because it's about scoring, not time. In the comboing game and and like putting your shots together, like hitting each and every shot and doing it within a three to five second space. The three to five second time. I'll show you. I'll show you. Uh, what do I wonder we want to be looking at? Have I got a decent score here. Yes. We did lost pattern. No, we didn't do. Oh, uh, I've got a decent score on Anakims. I do not want to do Nefarious Invasion. Um. No, let's do Desolation Town because I've been asked about this one, and this is another one of the beautiful looking maps. So, the scoring bar is pretty low here. We should be able to get half a million. I haven't played this one for ages, and it's not a great one for scoring high on. But we'll have a go. And I need to get a score on the board for it anyway, so... Hello, Indy. I can't. You've already got this game. Go ask Weeble. He'll post you on. So, um, but do it, DMs, yeah? So, yeah. So, as far as slow time is concerned, we want to be normally slow timing between each shot. Part and parcel of the reason why we want to do that is slow time in relation to things like the executioner timer, which you'll have heard me talk about, and the timer between shots in this is slowed by slow time. So slow time is advantageous in Siege of Heaven, and when thinking about the Executioner bonus, slow time is not one you want in anything that is time attack orientated, because that timer is not being slowed down. What I've done is I've rushed through the first 14 waves so that I know that I've got a good time coming on, and then in the very last wave, done the entire wave in s using slow time, and I got a crap time. So that's why I can tell you that that is the way round that it is. So, right, I've had my warm-up. My excuses are now well and truly behind me. Now we're going to play this mode properly. Oh, one thing I will do quickly make sure time are we on cool oh sorry you got the nuki visit coming up well uh, it'll be real life abuse then you're gonna love it weeps right so 
But yeah, Siege of Heaven. So again, this one has had it's it has had a graphical upgrade. I think it's always looked like this. It's just that because we had the Quest 2 and we didn't have the good lenses, we couldn't see it. It's one of the things that is quite good about this game is they haven't had to do a lot to improve it. They've just toned everything up. And that's because I think it was toned down for the... Uh, it was on the Quest 1 originally, this game, and then it was scaled up a little bit for the Quest 2, and then it's been scaled up again for the Quest 3, but it's the Pico lenses. Her, not Pico lenses. The Pancake lenses. Pico lenses. The Pancake lenses that are doing the good stuff for us. So, normally in Siege of Heaven, the way that we would play it would be thusly. We make copious amounts of slow time. If you are mid-combo and you are putting your score together, you use slow time. Slow time, slow time, slow time. This is the best place to come and learn how to abuse slow time. If you can abuse slow time for point scoring here, you can abuse it for combat in the actual game. Now, on to vertical and horizontal. Well, a lot of people use bows this way in games. And the reason being, and they are quite right, is you don't have anything obscuring your vision. Also, one of the things that Beanie, Jay, can do is he can actually aim the arrow because he can look right down that arrow and fire it. However, when I first started playing this game, I was basically like... Fuck those guys. I'm playing it vertical. That's how a bow is designed to work. So that's why I do what I do. And then hopefully you can judge me on my accuracy. Struggle. Cuddle. Yeah, I did watch that. Did watch that live stream. So there you go. We didn't miss a shot, which means that we get double our score. Now, our score was garbage, but I just wanted to show off a perfect because I'm not going to get a lot of them. Tempests are what we want for scoring. Tempest arrows are going to go through for double, double gap shots. So the double gap shot on this level is here. So as enemies are coming down from up here and here, they come along this way. And then there's your double gap shot. So you want to fire a Tempest through that and hit groups and headshots of enemies there. There are also multiple groups of bats that come here. The reason why we use Tempests is because they go through walls that, and they're like a railgun shot. So they kill everything within a... Imagine you're pushing a circle out instead of an arrow. And they kill everything within the circumference of that circle. Holding, holding the bow, I, I, hold, I hold the bow vertically because one of the things that I'm now able to do and am benefiting it from is I can pull my hand and now that I have got pro controllers, I can actually put my hand behind my head and I can sight down the arrow which is a lot easier. Now with the horizontal side of things you can kind of line the tip of the arrow up with your object and then estimate how far off you need to fire as you fire. So what I would say is a lot of people find horizontal easy to do, but it's not entirely practical in real life, but we're not in real life. I do martial arts within the real world. And a lot of the things that I do in Dragon Fist VR, I wouldn't dream of doing. I'm not going to poke someone in the eye. I'll probably break my finger. But in a VR game, you can do those things. And it's exactly the same. There are there are snobs like me that's like, no, no, vertical. It needs to be pl played vertically. Vertical bows are the way that bows work. Vertical, vertical, vertical. The truth of the matter is I use vertical. I use diagonal. I occasionally use horizontal. What I think horizontal is for is for showing off. So you go, bam, headshot, bam, headshot, bam, headshot, spin. And then one of those up into the chin. Don't you? Right. Let's have a look. Standard uh, I know, but you get random arrow drops. Yes, that's quite right. Right, so let's carry on with the scoring, shall we? Ha 
as I said, the, the fact of the matter is, I'll take the piss to anybody that does it differently from me, but you do what you're comfortable with. You did. No, it's not, Melissa. So, or Father Christmas. So, one of the things on this level, which is a little bit special, these circles that you see, normally circles within the game are good for us. They increase the multiplier as far as the scoring is concerned. In this mode, those circles, the red ones, are bad circles. Yeah, basically. Do what you find you are accurate with. Try both, is what I would say. So, we do not want to be killing enemies in there. Now, also note as well, I'm letting the enemies... This one's actually quite a difficult level, but... I'm letting the enemies get close. Ah, oh, mists. Da! I'm letting the enemies get close so that I can make my shots easy. I, I kind of hold mine at just off of vertical. Now, the other thing to note as well in this game mode, you need to be going for headshots. I am. I'm always talking about you, Beanie. <laughs> you were mentioned, sir. Hello, Jay. How we doing, mate? What can I say? Jay's back watching my streams. End of season approaching, people. Get those scores in. He's back. <laughs> it's only going to be a matter of time before he's posting scores on the leaderboard. Better get him in before the season ends. <laughs> uh, right. There you go. We'll end it there, shall we? What a score. Six, 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 six. So. For those of you who don't know, we have um, uh, Beanie in the chat. He is a previous VR archery legend. A previous in-death legend. Might be a bit of a has-been these days. We shall see. When are you going to pass putting some scores down? Has it now. Has it now. That Those are the bats that I'm talking about. And this is the shot that we want. No, I should have waited until that was lower. Mm, that was a terrible shot. That was a terrible shot. They come in lower than that. Those ones just didn't. We still... We still... <laughs> we still want to... Oh, I'm always holding your fear, mate. So we are still wanting to ideally not miss any shots here. No, I will tap the slow time button to get the enemy where I want before I take the shot. And then I'm back on slow time again, paying attention to where the enemies are coming from. Also hear that music in the background. Now we don't need to worry too much about keeping our combo going at the moment because we're not getting much in the way of in the way of uh, points but we do want to try and get some cupids and we do want to be trying to headshot those cupids to try and get some special arrows but headshots on those ones leaving are very very different what is the importance of cupids? Um, what are the importance of cupids in Siege of Heaven? Don't know, mate, if I'm honest. They're, like, they're just a really hard target, you know? So get the headshots on them. Don't, they're not worth much in points. <laughs> hmm. We still want to... I, I... I think horizontal is easier. Beanie's the one to talk to about horizontal. Whereas I fire my shots based on lots of consistencies and then kind of guesstimating my shot. And I've fired enough shots now where I kind of know where they're going to be going. Beanie actually sights his arrows so he can get further down on the arrow than me without losing tracking. I haven't got that problem anymore because of my pros. I can put the arrow, but I can put the controller behind my head but i don't know I, I still don't think that would work quite so well because you've still got to worry about dip and such as well 
But, and it's something of great annoyance to me as well, I can't get a very good sight picture, or wasn't able to previously, and as somebody who is a marksman within the, like, rifling world, and or used to be anyway, sight pictures and uh, the various training that I would have within marksmen, the fact that I can't get a very good sight picture and don't have these things to line up just really annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Athom. How are we doing? Uh, don't talk to me about the expo. There are, There is no accuracy when it comes to me and the expo. Right. Let's carry on, shall we? Uh, Hello, Nicole. That's a great question. Ask Beanie. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's winter. And it's not winter anymore, is it? It's spring. And the next season is going to be the summer season. We do know that they're doing a winter and a summer season. So I would imagine at the beginning of summer, whenever that is these days. I think it's May or June. I don't know. When you start going down the beach and wearing shorts is when the season will do its thing. Oh, you really think it's going to be that soon? Oh, that was... Oh, that's really annoying. Hmm. Oh, I thought I had enough headshots then. Um, would I recommend them? Uh, I hope so. I hope we're getting another tournament first, but I, I don't know. I don't know if that's on the agenda. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, as far as pros... Uh, remember how, the reason why I got Quest Pros. I got Quest Pros out of necessity because they were the quickest way for me to get some more controllers and I didn't just want to buy the ones that I've already got because they're going to be sent away, repaired and returned back to me. I wanted to try something else. Thing is, I've been looking for an excuse to get Pro controllers and it was just the excuse I needed. I was able to get them at half the price because I had vouchers and various bits and pieces from Christmas, so I didn't really pay 300. I paid 150. I really like the fact... I really like the fact that they've got a snazzy charging dock that is very fiddly, if you can see that, and you just drop them in to there, and then they sit quite nicely in there. I like the fact that I don't have to use batteries with my controllers anymore. However, if that is the only good reason that I can give for them, then you can get adapters for the Quest 3 controllers that can do the same thing. Hell, I think you can get them on the Quest 2s as well where you can put them into a charging dock. And probably a better one than what comes with the Pro or um, a bigger, easier to get them into design. It does have the benefit of me being able to sight down the arrow, but I've been making use of not being able to do that in In Death Unchained for so long now that I wouldn't start playing like this all of a sudden to try in an effort to try and increase my accuracy because I think I would be worse because of it. So I, I still maintain the fact that it is a lot, a lot of money for a marginal increase in controller tracking and performance and i do say marginal and the reason being for the quest 2 maybe but the quest 3's tracking's pretty fucking good already and these i don't know remember that quest pro controllers are one generation behind the quest 3 controllers technically so there is new tech in the quest 3 controllers that may not have been in the quest pros Yeah, I found that. That's a, a pain in the ass when you start getting bits and bobs and things stop fitting. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. There we go. <sighs> Scoring on this level is going to be an absolute nightmare. 
So note these yellow bars. If I hit an enemy whilst it has a yellow bar, i.e. within the circumference of those things, I will lose points. Oh, God. Ah! No, they are not. I mean, I've done exactly the same, and mine no longer fits in the box either, so... You're, uh, quite right there. So... Yeah, we might as well. Right. The one thing... Oh, shit. <laughs> Bye, too. I'm still in time attack mode here. I've done the time attack, so that's the shot that we want. We want to wait for them to dip. Yeah, I did get a double gap shot. I probably fired that shot a little bit too soon. That was 50k right there. Should have been more than that. Messed that up. Yeah, let's try not to miss. I didn't go off! Uh, well, there goes my perfect. This is why I hate incursions. I hate incursions with a passion. I wasn't on for a perfect then anyway. They'd already got through the gate. This is why you won't find me setting up incursions at the door. Because you leave enemies to get quite close to there. Leaving those incursions there more often than not. If you are... If you take what would be my best advice for this mode and that is let the enemies get as close as you can within your kind of like killing zone and make that killing zone as close as possible so you want to be standing as close to this corner as possible and you want your enemies without it pushing you back you want your enemies in this area if you are then setting up incursions here a lot of the time if you are doing those last second shots just before they go through the gate they're going to hit the incursion and either ruin your combo of headshots or worse like I just did then you fire the arrow thinking that the arrow will beat them to the explosion or that they're not going to set one off they explode and then the arrow passes through them harmlessly again wrecking your combo and destroying your perfect right let's not play this mode in rage excuse me we will play a map that I'm a little more familiar with next I'll show you how to score big in Anakims because that is a reasonably easy one to show off. Give myself an easy time of it. Because I don't think the score is going to be amazing here. But as you'll have seen from the board, your score doesn't have to be amazing in this mode. Because the scores are not amazing on this map. Because... Ah... You, you, sorry, I was listening then because you're all, you're all talking ab about the same sort of stuff that I'd be saying as well. This was part and parcel of what I had with In Death was that I thought the game had been abandoned, and then all of this stuff came along. But as the one thing that I can say is, Beanie does work for Super Bright still. He is technically still on the payroll, I think, and well, he said in the chat himself. They're working on other things, which is why this one's being abandoned. It would be nice to know what these other things were. I hope that they finish what they've started with this, because they gave Purgatory 
uh, well, it was supposed to be an upgrade, but I don't know, that floor, and it feels like a downgrade. I'm hoping they'll add the effects to the rest of the levels, then leave it. I'd hate for them to add those really cool effects to the purgatory, and then don't do the rest. It feels, uh, feels a little bit half arsed and slapdash. So, I'm waiting to do a stream on the main game when the new con- because we've still got- I don't know. This is- it kind of seems to be the way that Super Bright has done things in the past, is they've been full on for a very long time and now all of a sudden they've kind of dropped the ball. Now, to be fair, them dropping the ball is just like what every normal games developer does. I suppose we have been spoiled. We must remember this. And Weebs, as for the tournament, yes, it is easy to predict who's going to be in the top five and the top ten. And the reason being is because we play this game a lot and, you know... I mean, what do you want from a competition? Do you want a competition that basically anybody could win? I mean, that's not a competition, Weeble. That's called a lottery. I mean, you know, for those of you who play Formula, uh, who watch Formula One, are you bored of Formula One because Lewis Hamilton always wins everything? No. So no, pro controllers do not help with accuracy. See? <laughs> Three shots for a head. So, yeah. I mean, the thing is, if you want a competition within In Death Unchained that anybody can win, um, I mean, yeah, that's not a competition. Not a competition. Um, well, Nicole... Slow time is how you get the big scores. That's how you get the... I mean, I'm not doing a very good job of uh, demonstrating it here, but... Yeah, I mean, like... Uh, using the Formula One example, you wouldn't expect somebody who's been driving Formula One cars for a week to be able to get into a Formula One car and... Uh, win a Grand Prix, would you? Weeps. Has that ever happened in the history of Formula One? Someone's been driving Formula One cars for a week? But then how would that... How would you score points in that league? Surely it would be down to... Like, skill? Because if it's not about skill, then what is it about? Doing all right here. Yeah, we don't need that. Come on, keep them coming. So you can hear that crescendo of music in the background. Ooh. Come on, quick, quick, get through the thing. I need to shoot you. There we go. Oh, I missed it. Didn't get the perfect. See, even that wasn't great. There are not a lot of scoring. Not a lot of scoring opportunities in this map, which again is why the scoring bar, even the, the like, you know, I am by no stretch of the imagination what you would consider like top tier as far as Siege. I'm, um, just above average, I suppose. I can score. I can score well. I just 
don't invest the amount of time in this game that I used to, but I can still pick it up and win a tournament. So, but that's because I've played it a long time. The thing with Siege of Heaven is you need to put probably as much time into each of the individual maps, or at least I used to, as you would on probably, I don't know, one of my main runs, which are going to be like 40 to 60 hours worth of work. And I ain't got time for it anymore. I really haven't, folks. I got things to do. Many different people to see about many different ducks. <laughs> Hence why I do all of my work on the season and getting legend points live streaming, because then at least... I oh, fuck's sake. At least I can then uh, peddle it off as uh, content. And maybe give a lesson. Well, no, but... Le yeah, but they would never stay in the 4th Division, would they? The thing is, my Formula 1 side of things is not a good example. Um, your football one's a terrible example. That's what happens... I thought I should show it off. That's what happens if you shoot an enemy within the unholy ground. You lose the points that you would normally gain, and that does come off of your score. There is an achievement where you are to not score more than zero. And um, it's actually quite hard. Quite hard to not score decent. Like, shots that I'm taking there, they, those are too far out. I need to be waiting for enemies to approach. But again, this level's a bit weird. Let's make sure that guy's really far away, but that was not far away enough. Uh, it still did some damage to one of them. Look at that. Hey. Oh. Where are those bats? Uh, is this worth much? No, not really. Yeah, the... The problem that you get with divisions is the very word that they encapsulate. Division. You then get... I mean, in a multiplayer game, I suppose it's a little bit different. But you get division between the player... Ba oh, fuck's sake. You get division between the player base as well. Whereas... It's not anybody's game anymore. You have to work your way up. The problem with the division, in my opinion, is... I'd then have to work hard to get to the top and stay at the top. And I ain't got time to do that. So... And then the people that were playing the game probably don't uh, that can be up there probably don't either and so then is it really a win if you're not going up against the best because that's what you would have a division for to climb your way up and make your way to the top but the other thing to remember as well is super bright are working on other bigger and better things this game is basically not going to be supported i thought they'd already stopped and Obviously, I'm happy to be wrong on that front. Uh, uh, uh. Mm -mm. Yeah, I mean, there is that. I, uh, I don't play as much, nowhere near as much as I used to. Oof, that was a risky one. That was not worth it. Hold. I hate bats in this level. Ah! I hate bats in this level. They're very difficult to get headshots on nigh on impossible. Not the greatest of design choices in a game that is entirely based on accuracy. That was terrible. That was even worse. So 
So, as you can probably see, this is one of the levels that I am least familiar with. On a scoring basis. I know where the scoring is. But then the problem that you have with this map and this mode is that there is always a bit of a touch of randomness to it in not fuck in not just positioning of enemies and where they come from but also in what arrows you'll receive you can mitigate some of those things by you know landing your headshot scoring well and, and doing bits and pieces um yeah i just binned all of my tempests off for what i thought was going to be at least a little bit of scoring turns out it wasn't yeah, I'd love to be able to capitalise on them, I thought. <laughs> ah, well. Again, this is th this is actually the first time that I've played this for a proper score since the Quest 3 update. So, this is one of the maps that I... Let me break it down another way. There is a lot of points available on Anakim's Advance. I know the way to get a very good score quite consistently on that map and let's face it Anakim's advance the scores that you can get on that blow the scores on every other level shit out of the water so that is the map if I'm going to put my time into any map that I'm going to put the most time into learning oh you yeah, shit bag Yeah. Any of the maps where it's difficult to get headshots on cupids are tough ones because you can't get that level of consistency. So, for those of you who are not educated in the ways of siege, three headshots in a row spawns one of those cupids. Hitting one of those cupids is what starts these times for scoring rings. If you can headshot a cupid, you get given a random, a single, random special arrow. So if you can consistently hit cupid headshots... Terrible shooting. If you can consistently hit cupid headshots... Uh, on a level, then you can mitigate the fact that you might not get the luck in the shop but even then you can have it all come together perfectly and then the enemies might not spawn quite how you want them to or might not group up quite how you want them to or you don't get the good scoring ring first when you are getting your cupid shots Hey, put me on... Uh, I know a guy who can do it on Anakim's Advance. But again, this is why I say that I'm above average on this mode. Because I can't consistently hit Cupid headshots on every single map. This one included. I'm in... I suppose I haven't been playing this mode recently and enough. So I'm kind of out of practice. But... I mean, I've seen him hit some very... I've seen some very... long... Cupid shots... from yourself, but I haven't... I don't think I've seen anyone... Well, yeah. Apparently that's a glitch. Uh, apparently that is a glitch as it happens, Vega. But yeah, if I could if I could consistently hit those, like that headshot is achievable, but you have to go over their back and hit their head. And the the head and the the hitbox is so small. And you're then risking it all. And you've got to do that 
multiple times. Mm, no, that would have been a waste. Shit. Oh, come on. Just get past it. Damn. I suppose in the tradition of lining up excuses on this channel, I am getting used to the Quest Pro controllers. <laughs> so what's my excuse been all the rest of the time? That's a good goddamn question that I'm not going to answer. <laughs> No, I am not a Quest Plus member, and I, I think the, I think, I mean, chat will obviously answer that as well. Not many of us in chat are going to be on it either because we've all been playing VR for a very long time. If you do not have a library of games, like you're starting fresh, Quest Plus is fantastic value for money. If, however, you've been playing VR for a very long time, you'll have a huge library. Yeah, RB is a different beast. Ah, you fucking... No, I was doing so well. Practice is how you get consistency in this mode, definitely. But I'm uh, still a little out. I went through his head! Oh, uh. yeah, so that's that's it, but then, yeah, so the No, that's having the six months plus trial is really good. Even if you are paying for it, seven ninety nine. If you don't have a games library, is really good for the. You get access to about fifteen different games in a catalog. I don't think those games rotate, but you then do get two new games that you get to keep within your library whilst you have your subscription. So the longer you have your subscription, the better value it becomes, especially if you like multiple of the games that are on the catalog thing that's in addition to it as well i don't know if they're changing the games in the catalog but they've got some bangers in there there's onward which we've been playing a lot of on this channel there is uh walkabout mini golf uh, i believe demios on there and uh until you fall i mean those four games alone are good enough and then there's another five or six on top of that plus the two that you get free every month so i had a friend recently get into quest 3 hasn't been involved in the meta system whatsoever i highly recommended for him to get it he got the first month for free and then the other thing that you can do is if you pay for it for a year not only do you get it cheaper so the equivalent of no it's less than 5.99 a month the equivalent of £5 a month as opposed to £8 a month. He also got £20 store credit back as well. So, in essence, you could say he's paid £40 because he's going to have £20 store credit to spend also. So, if you can get that offer, if that offer is still going on, I think that offer is when you take a year out. So, it basically makes a year 40 quid, which, that's pretty fucking good value. Pretty good. Wait, 15. 
almost there. Not a bad score, nothing amazing. Might be able to get in the top 10, we'll see. With a bit of practice, I could. But the thing is, as I've said previously, for me now, it's all about the amount of time that I spend doing things to get where I need to be. I'm the same as a lot of players that have been playing this game for a long time. I ain't got anything left to prove. I can get firsts and I've had tournament wins and competitions and trophies and prizes and all that lot. So now all that's left for me is tournaments because they're very quick and easy for me to pick up and I can usually do quite well in them. Look at Basco. Whee! And... And... Oh, he's down there. And yeah, n and now I'm just here for legend points to get the shinies. That's literally it. <laughs> See if we can get a decent score on this last bit. At least hit 800,000. Where are those bats coming from? That oh, they were over there. Okay, here's the opportunity to get something. Salvage something. Uh, that was remarkably average. I think I took that shot wrong, if I'm honest. Alright, don't miss. Don't miss. Whatever you do. Don't miss. Shots. Ah! Going for the cheekiest of gap shots. And I fucked it. Oh, you... Oh, yeah. Right in the toe. Yeah, you might be able to hit those Cupid headshots, but can you hit them in the toe, Beanie? And yes, RB is one hell of a player on this game. So, just to give you an idea. So, that's my first play of this in a long time, actually. I'm not a fan of Desolation. It's a beautiful looking level, but... Part of the reason why I don't like it is there's not a lot of good scoring opportunities. And I can confirm that because... The top players in the world, i.e. Where's the... I.e. Up From The Depths, RB Avenue, even Mr. Fish, and he's... I mean, he's relatively new to Siege of Heaven. But if you look at RB Avenue and Up From The Depths, two very good players... They're only getting 3 million. Now let's go and try a mission. So why would I invest too much time in a map where there's not even that good of scoring opportunities? Yes, I'm going to play the combo game. I'm sixth in the world on that after that performance. I can play the multi-kills game. I'll show you how to do that later. I didn't get very good. Uh, 15, that's not too bad. This is all... They're all... Um, a little bit of legend points here, there, and everywhere. I won't have got very good on the distance. Might have got all right on the Cupid's. There you go. Sixth on the Cupid's leaderboard. And then it's added three million points to my score overall, which will put me at probably about 21 million if that hasn't already... Already, uh... <laughs> oh, dear. Who is it yet? Hang on. Just got a notification that you're catching up in Siege. <laughs> right? Always catching. Always catching. So, so as I said, Desolation, great map. We do need to do all of them. Desolation is one that I'll concentrate on for uh, gap shots and cupids and headshots. Because going for cupids, going for headshots and going for gap shots and multi-kills, you would play differently to how you would play for scoring and so you can almost subdivide now i know what you're thinking like oh yeah can't win can't get first in score so he's changing the rules of the game and you're quite right because i fucking hate 
people who do that as well. I can't win tournaments. Make them so that they're more inclusive for everybody. It's like tournaments are supposed to boil up the very best that the game has to offer and allow them to show off and practice their skills. It's, tournaments are not designed for everybody to be able to win, anybody to be able to win. That's called lotteries. So, but with changing the rule sets and changing the leaderboards and there are leaderboards at least for this so i'm not playing this way because i can't win in scoring i'm playing this way because there are legend points available and there are leaderboards for it so and i want to compete in those leaderboards and not a lot of people who play siege of heaven even look at any of these leaderboards and these leaderboards do earn you legend points based on your finishing position there you go we can see even vegas been and fish as well have been pushing the headshot side of things they probably did that whilst they were scoring where's vega where is vega can't see him it's on my friends list isn't he oh sorry sorry vega got ya <laughs> hey look there's off them cheers mal there's Athom as well. Now, the likelihood is, note how I got a larger score than Vega. Vega got a lower score than me, but has got more headshots than I have. So he might have actually been hunting for headshots. I, I don't know. He'll be able to tell us. Timing-wise, I'm fourth in the world on that one, though. So, let us have a look at one that I can show you how to score very, very well on. Uh, and this one's a lot easier, not in just the working out, but also the execution. So you can see I've got a reasonably good score of 12 million now. I would rather pump all of my time into learning how to do this map well, because this map I've had 16 million on, close to what Arby's got there. So, I mean, you ask me, if you've only got a certain amount of time to put into a game you'd want to go because the thing is i'm going to try and get a decent score on every single board that there is but there is also the total oh that was an update oh, i've still got seven million points to find them ah, there you go there you go so As you complete all of the levels, you'll then get a total score. This is a separate leaderboard as well. This leaderboard, I think you get just as many points for the individual ones as well. But another leaderboard is another leaderboard, which is why you want to do them all anyway. So, let's go and have a look at Anakim's. Can show you how to do very well on the old gap shot game on this one. I'm quite certain I could take first on gap shots. Maybe I'll show that afterwards. It's not a very good way to play, though. It's not very CG. So, this is also the map to get good at headshots on Cupids with. Because there are stages within this game. And, you know, like, levels of progression. And one of those levels is getting to the point where you are starting to headshot cupids. And that, thanks to this level in a lot of ways, is this one. Oh, for f it doesn't matter about the combo. It matters about the headshots. So what we're doing here is we are farming headshots. We want to farm those headshots as close to the gate as possible. The reason being is because that then means that the Cupid flies further, like right across our eye line in this level. And that's what we want. There you go. And that's a glitch, would you would you not believe it as well? The fact that they do that little fucking stupid shuffle is apparently a glitch. Never been fixed. I always thought that it was a feature, and I have cursed the very life of the dev who put that in. That fucking wiggle. So yeah, apparently that is a glitch. I thought it was what the devs did it on purpose to fuck up the scoring of people like me and Beanie and For the Right and and uh, and everyone who plays uh, Siege. 
and that's been in the game forever. There is a way to counter the wiggle, don't let them get too close to the gate. You want to be killing them in this sort of area, but there's times where you have to let them get a little bit closer, so you have to wait until after the wiggle. But getting the timing on that is uh, an absolute ball ache. So, three headshots. Only three guys, three headshots. We're not worried too much about comboing at this point. Doesn't surprise me. That's what we want, and then one of those. Now, the technique that I use for getting those cupids is I... Uh, it's a combination of two different kinds of marksman E principles. You've got tracking and ambush. So tracking is where you would follow and shoot. Ambush is where you would hold your aim at a point and wait for the target to come into your aim and then shoot. I do a little bit of both. I track and then at the very last minute I kind of set myself up for the ambush and fire. So you'll see when I get the headshots on the cupids I track and then I do that and kind of move the the bow. Well, I suppose it isn't really ambush firing. It's kind of tracking, and then I do that to accommodate for the speed of the Cupid. I f it's the technique that I use, and I find it consistent. I'm glad Beanie's in the chat. Here's something that he taught me, or something that I thought was a really good use of incursions. I don't know if he still do does it. I've gone to the I've gone to the extreme with this technique. There are a lot of cupids that we're going to be exploding, uh, we're going to be getting from this level, that are going to be really far out. They're going to be in this area, and they are not worth risking a shot on. If we set incursions up on this pillar, there's a chance that those incursions will take those stray cupids that we're not going to be able to get a normal shot off on, and so have to waste a Tempest or leave to fly away. At least this will destroy them, and we'll get some points out of it. Better, if you ask me, than putting the incursions here. However, Arby puts his incursions here and he's probably the best of us so take my advice in that circumstance with potentially a pinch of salt but as i say the reason why i don't put incursions here is when they get close enough for me to get that headshot either the incursion will go off and ruin my headshot streak so i then have to start again and get another three headshots before a cupid is spawned or worse yet the incursion goes off just as i fire the arrow and it's too late that's then a miss combo perfect ruined now on this level the first few waves are all about building up your surplus of arrows I've already picked mine up, yeah, because we didn't... How did I not pick up a Tempest at the start? Fucking idiot. Or did I? Can't remember. Might not have picked up an arrow. No, you have to pick up an arrow at the start. Interesting. I suppose we're only on wave one. Oh, yeah, we're only on wave two. Right. A little bit more farming. So, what we want to do is we want to have the third finishing headshot as far along as possible so that the Cupid has got more airtime in front of us, making that headshot a little easier. The way that we do that is we hit two headshots that are behind before hitting the third. That was a headshot. It's in his fucking skull! I mean, it's back of the neck, but still. Start again, shall we? And that also counts as a headshot, which then means we only need two, ah, two headshots on further enemies to then spawn another Cupid. So getting headshots on Cupids is also important for getting more Cupids, which then allows more headshots. As hopefully I will be able to show off. <clears throat> right, quick drink, and then we'll crack on. But yeah, full credit to Beanie for this. I don't know if he still does it, but it was his thought to try it, and I've then taken that on a few steps as to the reasons why you should do that. But then I think me and Beanie can both agree that the big boys don't do that. So, you know, why are we... <laughs> Who knows, eh? Hello, K2. How we doing? Jay's in the chat, look! 
Yeah, no, that is a um, no, that is a very good point. So the last thing that we hit was a body shot. So the headshots do not carry or headshots do carry across from wave to wave. We're currently on zero out of three for the spawn of a cupid because the last shot that I hit was not a headshot on that cupid. If that had been a headshot on that cupid, we'd be starting off on one headshot now, which means that we would get a cupid spawning after two more headshots, but that was not the case. Now, here's the special thing, and this is where you can score all of your points from. Anakin! <laughs> Hello there! Makes an appearance on this level. And he gets bigger and bigger and with a higher and higher life bar and ultimately, uh, eventually as well, multiple come off of him. If he gets to the gate before we take him down, instant death regardless of how much life you have in the gate. Be aware of that. Now, what we want to be doing is we, to begin with, we want to be trying to go for headshots. If we headshot him, it continues our scoring, but it does it doesn't add to our uh, sorry, it adds to our combo, but it doesn't keep the timer going for the combo. So you can put a headshot in Anakin as you are doing other things, but it's only kills that continue your combo. Now we do need to take this cat down reasonably quickly. We'll wait here. Yeah, no worries, uh, No worries, Lord. Um, this does count as a headshot. So that's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Ah! Ah! Back of the fucking neck. This one first. Then that one. Then that one. We don't need to worry too much about being in combo. Ideally, I want to get that guy on a headshot first and that one last. Ooh, I don't think he's going to let me. There we go. Let you get right across, because we don't need to worry about combo at this point. Again, we are farming arrows here. I'm just not doing a... Ah! Very good job of it. So we got a couple of extra Tempests out of that, which... Is about as good as it's going to get. So, now there is a little bit of a decent scoring opportunity on Wave 4. The first appearance of a Cupid. Her first appearance of a Orphan, rather. Orphans come at Wave 4, Wave 8, and I think it's Wave 11? It's been a while. Hello, Radius. How we doing? What? Oh, have you gone for it? Oh, right, you've really been, you've just been watching the original trilogy. Oh, well, this is uh, just as good. Right, so there is a bit of a scoring opportunity by getting a gap shot whilst in combo on the orphan here, but it depends on where she comes in at. If you can rage mode it, you can get a decent amount of score from that. Now, why are we worried about score early in this because one thing i haven't explained is you basically want to farm arrows or farm things if you're playing for high score you want to be farming arrows in this mode uh, in this level up until about wave nine that's when you start using them up until that point we're just farming them what we're going to attempt here is we'll start that and then i need to get a hit on something and that so there's 40,000 points now that's not bad for a single tempest use you can get better than that though um, I'm not going to worry too much about the combo but I do want to try and double that now in the grand scheme of things when we're talking about these stupid scores oh yeah busted 40,000 is not a lot. 80,000 is good. Remember that points carry over on a one-to-one -one basis as far as gold. And what do we use gold for in this mode? We use gold for additional arrows. And basically by taking a little time out of your day to score decently in at least one of the early waves. Ugh. 
Harry Pear plays this game on Rage Mode all the way through when he used to play it. <sighs> Disgusting level of skill that is. So by getting that decent amount, we've got a decent amount of bank, which will allow us to not have to worry about what we pick and what we go for. I'm having those because we need Hand of Gods for what I'm about to do. I have said previously that you want to try and avoid the two stacks and the one stacks of things because they will double the next type of arrow, regardless of whether it's a one, two or three times. They'll double the amount of money that you pay for it. It'll double whether you take a times two, a times three, or a times one. So you want to be having it doubling when you're getting the most value out of the arrow by taking the times threes. So don't do what Donnie Don't is doing here. This level's a little bit different. Because you can expect to be getting a lot of cash if you are hitting your shots, if you can make sure that you've got those arrows, then you can just buy up the farm every single time that it's offered. Whereas, even when you are scoring well in other maps, you might find yourself coming up shy at the later stages when trying to pick up those... Like, these chests will be a ridiculous amount of gold for things later on. So, where is the double gap shot on this level? There isn't one. But I'll explain how we're going to do some scoring soon. It's basically going to be... The, the general concept is get a four times marker here or here. Wait for Anakin to get within it. Headshot him to within an inch of his life. Hit the bell so that it puts the um, enemies into rage mode so that you're getting more points. Finish off Anakin and then finish the crowd with a Tempest. And the point that we are looking for as well is you need the Tempest to skim or at least go through this archway that's in front of us. By it going through or just skimming gets a lot of points because it adds a gap shot to the combo um right are we ready are we ready capua shall i begin okay one two Headshot. No. Even got through the bloody portal. So you can see that we've got a decent amount of cupids there. Again, the scoring at this point doesn't matter. It's the farming that we're doing. Remember that every time we hit a cupid headshot, I mean, I didn't get as many as I could have then, but every time we hit a cupid headshot, we get randomly generated one of these special arrows. The more we can hit, the more chance we'll get arrows that are actually good. Cataclysms? Rubbish. Incursions? They have a use, but that's only because we've kind of tried to find one. What the hell? Yeah. There we go. Just lost tracking for some reason. There we go. And... That's a first. And, um... Yeah, it is for what for what usage I can get out of incursions, whilst they are very cheap, 23 grand for three of these is very cheap. 23 grand is basically nothing on what we're going to have score-wise later on. And it does allow me to lacquer up this pillar with a lot more incursions. Hopefully you'll see that come into effect later on. The other thing to note as well is don't pick up, if you are doing this, don't pick up the arrows that you have behind you want to leave these as storage so that you always have space to fit the ones into your quiver that you buy from the shop so it's only when you start getting low and you've finished your shop buying that you start grabbing these the other problem that you have with that though is the more you get the further they encroach and sometimes you will find yourself standing here and just that is fucking annoying i'm hoping that super bright will do what they did in siege royale and have all of these arrows rise up high whilst you are in wave that would be nice wouldn't it anyway 
Right, let's grab that. Quick smoke. And continue to build. Now, the more resources you have, the more consistently and more often you can start trying to score big in the later waves. I like to start from about wave nine, but it is resource dependent because once you start playing the game and going for the shots that I'm going to be going for, it becomes very resource intensive. But for now, we're not worried about perfects. We're not worried about hitting every single shot. We're worried about headshots and more importantly, Cupid headshots. Let's get some... How has that gone through him? Ugh. I mean, I want perfects, but they're not necessary at the moment. There we go. All right, that's enough. That's basically to spawn all of his minions, because that's what we're here to farm. You shit. Oh, you... Stop working! Damn you. I missed that last shot. Ooh. Right. Again, haven't played this mode for a little while, a bit out of practice. So, we got a couple, though. So, we'll add the incursions. So, you can see we're building up a... Well, you see it when, like, Arby plays it. It's, like, wall to wall with arrows back here. So... Right. On, on. And still we wait. The opportunity for scoring is coming. You can start at any time. However, the later you leave it, the more enemies there are, the more opportunities there are for Cupid hits to score those four times markers. And also the more health Anakin has, so the more enemies he can spawn and drop into the circles, which are into the um, holy lights... I'm not even worried about combo at the moment. Let's get you skinned. If I can finish him from here with a headshot, that'd be nice. Because that, that's a headshot now. And then that's number two. Wiggle. That's number three. Damn it. Damn it. Oh, that's terrible. Now, there is an argument for farming using Hand of God. Oh, that was a terrible shot. Wasted all those headshots. There is an argument here for using Hand of Gods to slow them up so that you can then get easy headshots because they're in the Hand of God bubble and slow down. And then farm cupids and get headshots out of them that way. The problem that I find with that is you are then using a very useful resource for potentially getting a crap one. And also, and more importantly, I can hit cupids more often than not when they are flying at normal speed. The moment they're in a slow time bubble, I can't hit them for shit. I really can't. Such a hard, such an easy hard target. One, one, two. We've got lots of hand of gods. I want more tempests. Um, we haven't got a lot of cash at the moment, but the cash side of things will be coming online soon. Let's start scoring. This is a good wave to start scoring on, I think. So there are a couple of things that you can do, and this is why this can become very arrow intensive. Is you can start hitting Anakin with hand of gods right at the back here to slow his roll and stop him getting to you as soon as he normally would ideally you want to hit him low 
so that the bubble expands out and catches additional things. Cheers, dude. Yeah, nice one, Beans. See you later, mate. Okay, there. There. I've missed you. There. See where she goes. Right, she's running all the way to the end. That's good. Let's keep this combo going. Again. Oh, mister! Oh, well, I got the headshot at least. Right, that's the bubble that we want. But, oh, fuck's sake! Oh, well, I'll sh show you. So, you put them into slow time. Make sure you're at least in combo before you do this. Headshot him to within a skin of his life. Hit the bell. Finish him off. I then usually take a knee and then skim the top of as many enemies as you can with a Tempest shot. Shit. Shit. Well, well, this is a freebie if I can get it. Come on, yeah, you little shit. <laughs> I could have wasted a Tempest on that, but it's not worth it. So our score went up from 80,000 there to 461,000. We now have an absolute ton of cash also. Oh, no, it probably wasn't 80,000. We were quite low previously. Right, more hands of God. And we'll start doing it again. So as I said, I probably should have farmed that wave. But I think it's from wave nine that you want to start scoring. So this one is probably, depending on how you play it, as equally intensive on hand of God arrows as it is on Tempests. Tempests are what get you your big score. Hand of God is what you use to set it up. Ooh, good battery. I didn't check battery. Full missing Von tonight. <laughs> right, so we'll let them all get a little closer before we start taking our shots. We do not want to be hitting Anakin at all, really, but I will attempt an arrow. That's about where you want to land it. Groin to thigh, maybe knee if you can make that shot. It makes the bubble lower so that the widest part of the edge keep him in it for longer, which basically slows him for longer. Then we want to continue to farm without missing. Not the spot that we need. Bugger. Bugger. Keep that combo going, and then it's one, two, three, ring, four, and then... One there. One there. Watch this Cupid. And he hits our incursion. So that was a free, like, 17k. I didn't have to work for it. I shot the other one as well. Now, if I had have perfect that wave, that 600,000 that I just scored would have been doubled. So that wave could have been worth 1.2 million if I didn't miss that fucking shot. But we also managed to farm quite a lot of Cupids there as well. Which was good. Uh, get that out of the way. So this is more like it. We got a one, two, three, four, five tempests. One, two, three, four, five, six, and six hand of gods. Plus what we have in the quiver as well. So we're not doing too bad. We're starting to get a decent amount of cash together, and we should be able to out economy the chests at this point now, providing I keep scoring well. Do pay attention to where you put your arrows. If I had have put those two Hand of Gods where the Tempests were, I would have lost those five Tempests. That's a restart. That's the other thing to note as well is I'm 
not inclined to keep restarting runs when I'm live streaming this, even though I possibly should. This is less about the scoring and more about showing the techniques off on the how-tos, so that you guys can do it too. Right, let's... Yeah, let's... One of them into him. That still counts as a hit. We're not going to worry too much about combo right now. I want to get these other two headshots. There. There. Uh, uh, there. Every fucking circle but the one I need, you bastard. Mm, this is uh, unfortunate. Gonna have to waste an arrow now to make sure I get what I need. Oh, he didn't blow up! Yes, he did. There we go. Good. We're in business. Now, I need to keep the combo going. I need to make sure he's in there. There we go. That one there. No, you don't. And then it's one. Two, three. And he went down sooner than I expected there. And then one there. And one there. And then that one will go... Ooh. Is he worth the shot? No. So 400... That wasn't actually anywhere near as good as it looked. <laughs> so I didn't miss a shot there, which is why I got given a perfect, which in essence takes the 400,000 that I just scored and then doubles it. Again, it, this gets silly the further you go into the waves. We're only at wave... That was only wave 10. This is wave 11. There's always more enemies on the higher waves. So I don't think I got... Although I got the kills... I didn't... You, what you want to be doing when you are firing that Tempest is you want to be... I've said previously that it's almost like firing a circle out. And if that's... If my hand fingertips are the circle, you want to be trying to use the lower part of the circle to skim as many of the enemy's heads as possible. Again, there is a slight element of luck to that as well because sometimes their arm hitbox will be a little bit further ahead than where their hit head hitbox is and that's just based on their movement or how they've spawned in or the path that they're taking and so sometimes you may have aimed for the headshot but you still hit the arm so you then try and aim higher and as i've done plenty of times you then fucking miss with the tempest i've done that way too many times trying to skim heads some of that was good not a lot of it though but that's the general idea and also i didn't get to hit the bell before I killed Anakim, so we missed out a little bit here. So, again, we are going to Hand of God in there. That was risky as fuck. I'm just going to shoot you normally. Um, I need to collect up a Hand of God or two to make sure that I've got the resources to do this. Can I have the Hand of God, please? Thank you very much. So he's slow time at the moment. Let's get rid of you. Right. There's not a lot of enemies about, so we have to be very careful here because we have to kind of, like, eek the enemies out. Oh, you... I <laughs> have to eek the enemies out to allow Anakin to get here. Now, he is on the other side. Oh, this has not worked out very well. Okay, this isn't going to be a scoring wave then. Of course. Of course of fucking of course. Ah well. We can still use this wave to farm. Completely missed that, stupid. Ah, oh, that's really annoying. 
Now, I've just scored two headshots. If I don't take the shot at that guy, and he's not going to be worth firing a Tempest at, the headshots that I've, the two headshots that I've just scored there will carry over to the next level, potentially making the next level a little bit easier to do this quicker. The reason why I abandoned going for the scoring is I didn't get the four times ring where I needed it by the time that he got there. If I'm not getting the four times ring where I want it, then the wave will then default back to a farming wave as opposed to a scoring wave. So, but ideally at this point, you want to be making every wave a scoring wave. Um, I think we've got enough, but then come a cropper from saying that before. I kind of always need more Hand of Gods, and you always need more Tempests. This probably isn't enough for the way that what I want to do. So, right. Scoring wave until it's not. <laughs> Again, we want to try and leave things as late as possible to give Anakin time to get in and also to try and continue getting the headshots so that we can uh, farm the cupids. I want to headshot you. Come on, quick. Quicker than that. Oh, you shit. That's not where we wanted it. Still in combo. I've got a chance here if I can nail this cupid. That's the one that we wanted. We want... Oh, got lucky then. That hit him in the foot. We'll do that. And we'll go one, two, three, this, this. End of my combo. Doesn't matter though. Just don't miss. Just don't miss. This is where I shouldn't be risking the miss for the purposes of farming cupids because there's a lot of points on the line for a miss there. But we didn't. 800,000. So that means we scored 800,000 in the wave in its entirety and then we got awarded another 800,000 again so as you can see I'm only going into wave 13 and I'm already on 3.5 million that's not that great a score though at this stage um we will have those again as you can see the arrow bundles are now coming up into the 50,000s we've got like yeah we're in the millions on gold because we're scoring well so if you can carry on we're always going to need these. If you can carry on doing good and better and better scoring, you can afford these. But that's not the case with most other levels. There's not enough scoring going on to be able to continually keep up with how expensive those arrows can get. Uh, did we get anything else other than those? All Tempests and Hand of Gods. So just basically more of the same now when you get to wave 14 and wave 15 there are two anakims one coming from each side it just basically means more enemies for us to kill you're only going to be able to do the kind of bingo shot with the bell on one of them because if you ring the bell on the first one it then speeds up the rest of the level and that is not optimal that's what we want and that's what happened Fuck. Note how I'm edging my way over to the side whilst I'm doing all of this as well. And that is positioning me for the shot that I'm going to take. 
on old Annie Bobs in just a moment. If I can keep this combo going, I'll be happy. Ish. We've lost out on the opportunity of the perfect. And then it's there. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a one point that's a one million point shot right there. Shame I didn't get the perfect, because that's two million points straight away. He'll get blown up by that. Everything works out beautifully. Um, I might as well take that shot, because it doesn't matter if I miss, because I didn't have a perfect go in. So, hopefully, that will show you what these... Now, the reason why that one was worth a lot more, and that shot is more desirable than that shot, is because that is a... That one there is a four times gap shot. That one over there is a four times gap shot long shot because it's a slightly further away range. So ideally, we want to be doing our scoring there. That's where you'll get the big points from. So, But you can get just a lot of points from there as well. Right, let's buy them Tempests. So Arrow Bundles are starting to come into the millions now. Not a bad score. Not a bad score. I remember when... Me, Beanie, and Skoma, was it? We're playing this map for the first time and we were constantly one up in each other and we thought we were doing well to get to like 8 million. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, right. Dun, 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 dun. Right, so we are getting very low on Tempest. The last thing you want to be doing is grabbing the resources that you need during combat. That's a good way to fuck yourself over on this mode. So stock up with what you need before you go into it. I know that this is going to be a scoring opportunity and it is going to be very arrow intensive. However, do not put your quiver higher than, if you have to, seven. You shouldn't need seven Hand of Gods and seven Tempests. And the reason being is because if the next shot offers a three times and you can't put it in that slot, or, you know, you haven't got enough arrows in that slot, then you would put it in there and lose out on the additionals or start it in a new slot, which isn't a bad shout, but I try and keep my arrows in the same place at all times. You've got a lot to think about in this mode. You don't want to have to think about where your arrows are, so you always do things the same way. For instance, I have my incursions at the bottoms, my catalysts at the top, Tempest to the right, Hand of God to the left. And the reason why I do that is that's how I've always done it. It just feels right to have them that way. It means that I can come up slightly to grab the point scorer and down slightly to grab the setup shotter. Right. Let's see if we can capitalize on that score. We need a perfect. We need. Second Anakin to come out there would be ideal. I'm not going to slow either of these ones down with an initial Hand of God. I don't think I need to. I am just going to body shot this dude. No, I'm not. I need to put headshots in because I need those four times. I'm not going to worry about comboing too much now. Fuck! There goes our perfect. There goes our salvage, guys. Ah, uh, well. Right, we've got the four times that we need to score big. That's a start. Now we just need to work on the combo. Shit! Stop it. That there. Look at that guy go! <laughs> How's that not got his head? Have to do that manually. At this point now, it's just about keeping the combo going. We'll inch across. And get more cupids. And do a bit of farming along the way. Happy days. 
note how even I've come a bit short on Tempests there. Come on, get in my hand, you fucker. That's why you don't want to be fucking about with these things. Keep the combo going. That one for you. Damn it. Fuck. That wasn't a perfect anyway. There you go, that's tied another million on again with a perfect. That would have been two million if I'd done better with the combo inside of things. That could have been closer to three or four. And on to the last wave. So on the last wave there's nothing for us to save our money for spending your money does not affect your score just like it doesn't in the main game so when we get to this last you know we're not buying cataclysms but we will i uh, never buy ones but you know when when the game mode is about to end and you're gonna lose all your cash anyway you might as well and now we'll just stock up to the max on everything because we're not going to be looking behind us again note how even i didn't put enough tempests in and i almost came up a cropper that was part of the reason why that combo wasn't quite as good because i had to turn around and it's not particularly reliable to restock so that was a don't do what donny don't just did because yeah absolute nightmare at this point as well what i could do Get the rest of these out. There. And I could put that on these Hand of God here, just to make sure that I've got plenty. If I need 13 odd Hands of God in a single round, I am doing something wrong. Part of the reason why I'm putting everything in is to stop there being any arrows at the back for this last round, because I can. Because when you're standing on the edge here, or standing on the edge here, and you've got a lot of arrows behind you, they can encroach on you, and it's really fucking annoying. So, yeah. Hmm. See if we can tie on a couple of extra million, and then I'll show you how to do decent numbers on the gap shot market on this level. But that's going to be going after a different leaderboard. But this is one of the, as I said, this is one of the levels that I have practiced most extensively for the simple reason that this is where you can get a hell of a lot of points. As I... Fuck! Fuck! As I already have. So, yeah. As I said, my top score on this level has been that I think I was in the 16, 16 million. Right, we will put him on ice. Try and do something a little bit different for the end one. This is as much as an experiment for me as anything else. Ah. Because we've got a lot of Hand of Gods. So my thought process is let's try and get these Anakims to come at us together. Which is doable. Oh, you shit. Missed him. There we go. Uh, I'm going to need some enemies here, guys. I'm going to have to put some shots in them just to spawn some enemies. Otherwise, we're not going to get enough headshots to get another Cupid. And we're going to need at least two more Cupids to guarantee the four times that was a fucking neck shot. I hate this game. Ow! <laughs> right. So many emotions with Siege of Heaven. Not all of them good. Fuck! Typical.
Oh, another one going for it. Don't even know if they were good shots. Possibly not. We'll have you though. Eh. That's a. Uh, to be fair, that's lower than my average. But there you go. That should give you an idea. I can usually score in the sort of like 8 to 10 million. And then on a good day, I was able to get 12. I've hit in the lower than that. Probably about 16 million, I think, has been my highest. But this should show you. If you know the techniques how you can do it and the other thing to note as well is look how many people in look how close the top 10 is there's there you know obviously there's a bit a bit of a gap between from seventh onwards but then even eighth five million ninth five million tenth four eleventh four look both close to five Athom's there with four million um, Stanky Storms is there with almost 4 million. So these are all... This should give you an indication when you are looking at scoreboards. Like, that score alone would get me in the top 10 that want that 12 million. So that would be me scoring higher than Athom, who can play this game well, off of just one map so that's why it's worth spending the time on Anakim's advance now I don't I can't tell you if that attempt was how we got a decent headshot thing it was a lower score than what we had what the hell's going on with my controller there we go uh I think that was where my combo score would already be. Again, you can see that the combos are high. This is just literally how many points you have made in a combo. I think 6593 means that I've made uh, I've hit a 6 million point combo. I think that is or 6. Point, 6, point 6 almost. Um that would be with the perfect as well. No, I don't think it does work that way. Multi kills you have to go for separately. Multi kills are not as easy or as. Uh, sorry, multi kills are not as easy to get whilst you are scoring as they are to get when you are after them. The reason being is a multi kill counts as any kill performed with an arrow that kills more than one enemy. So that means that if we use the Cataclysm or even a Tempest on those circles and killed 100 enemies with that single arrow, it would still only count as one multiple kill. Whereas those 100 enemies, if we divvied them up into groups of two and took each group of two out with a separate Tempest, each group counts as a multi-kill. So instead of getting one multi-kill from 100 enemies, we would get 50 multi-kills by them all being in those groups of two. So that's the way to game and manipulate that system, so to speak. This score will be from getting multi-kills on the circles, on the bingo shots with uh, Anakin. Gap shots, again, I'm not going to be... Uh, even though I'm I'm not going for number of gap shots, the number of gap shots is the amount of gap shots that you achieve. Um, I'll show you how to game that system in just a moment. Distance is basically the score that you get from long-range shots. I don't exactly know exactly how this is measured or how it works because I did not score for 563 points in long shot shots i mean i scored that amount in long shot shots on just that bingo shot i scored double that so it's not that so again i'm not too sure how that one works but again it's just one and a lot of the time when i do my time ones i end up getting a decent score on this one anyway so i think it's like sniper shots and headshots at extreme long range and such so we're all right on time on this one. Not bad on combo. All right on score, or at least I'm happy with that score. Uh, Headshot-wise, could be improved. Multi-kill, I'll do on a different day. Gap shots. Let me show you how to do gap shots. I'll use Anakim as an example, because this will allow me to show you all the little tricks. Now, do take note. We are... Oh, that's quite easy numbers. We are 83rd in the world with 82 gap shots. Top Boy has... 
392. And Mr. Fish, not Top Boy, has 344. So, this is going to work a little bit differently. Hand of Gods are definitely an arrow that you want to be using here. Tempests, not so much. We don't want to use Tempests. Because Tempests are going to kill enemies too quickly. Let me demonstrate. So we'll start at the bell, and I'll show you what I mean. So our first obvious and easy gap shot, and we don't need to worry about perfect or comboing or anything. If you can get them whilst you're doing this, they will allow you to buy more special arrows, which is always good. Like, uh, well, we haven't got the Tempest to even do it, so I could fire at that guy right in the distance there with the Tempest, skim the top of this, and that would count as a gap shot. However, and now I am actually kneeling in a real life. We don't need to go for headshots. We just need to shoot through that little arch. An ambush, by the way, is a gap shot headshot. And then if you do a double gap shot headshot, that is a tricky ambush. We don't, again, want to worry about combos. If we can get perfects, happy days. We're just going to shoot every single dude that we can through an archway. It does take a little bit of practice on the timing. But, again, no, I am on the towards the right-hand side of this platform and ducked so that I can make use of this. So that's the initial concept. Now we'll see about taking that one step further. Now, do note that each time you hit an enemy is a gap shot, providing it has gone through something. Emphasis on the word hit. So when you start getting enemies that have got a particularly large amount of life, you can shoot them multiple times and do as little damage as possible. And each time you do that, will be classed as a gap shot. Let's see if we can get these ones. So those are more difficult shots. I do not need to make those shots because those same guys that are going to go wandering over there are going to be over here. And now we wait. We don't worry. We're not too worried about the combos. It's about the gap shotting. Again, copious use of slow time. Ah, oh, missed it. Shit. Right in the arse. Oh. Get used to sitting down on the job in, uh, in this style of play. So again, nothing untoward, nothing special yet. Um, probably do some more sitting down, I guess. Now, remember how I said that the damage with the bow, Anakin is the only exception to the rule here where enemies die in a single headshot hit. However, the further an enemy is away from you with the bow, as we know, the more damage they take. So we want short range shots and we want as little draw as possible. So you could do something like this and then put the slow time on that as well and then that's however many gap shots that was these guys are only going to take one hit anyway and one of the other things that you can do to really capitalize on this is we could put a hand of god down about there Oh, shit. Just used all my hand of gods then. Bastard. That's not good. Shit. So, this is one of the problems that I wish you could turn off in this game. You may have come across it yourself. I know I have on plenty of occasions. That's... We just wasted all of our Hand of Gods. We're only on wave four. Is it worth starting again? So what happened there is when you are...
tapping the slow time button, if you tap slow time whilst you have an arrow drawn, it changes this arrow to your next special arrow. It is a clunky mechanic at best, and I don't know anybody who actually uses it in real play. Part and parcel of the reason is it can be random, or depending on how much you've got in the different arrows, can be random as to which order it goes in, because some arrow slots might be empty, so it's not a reliable enough mechanic for me to use. And it is quicker, not in time, in real time, but it is quicker to put the game into slow motion and select the arrow than it is to flick to it in real time. So a bit of a redundant mechanic, I find, but it, and it can really get in the way when you are trying to manipulate slow time to the max. All right, that is a... Uh, no, I'm not going to be able to make that, so let's just end her normally. Oh, good. Well, there's one of them back. This guy's going to be a little harder. Having one hand of God is probably preferable to having multiple, because I now don't need to worry about using multiple hand of gods in a moment. Um, we can do the same thing on white knights here. Little pissy draws, those are, basically. I use full draws on these guys, because might as well. And so, let's see if we can get some... See, if I make them full look, full draws, it'll take more health off of him. And we don't want to take health off him. Also, he would have been in that four times as well, so that would have not been advantageous. Now, what we are... Let's try and get some pissy little shots on his feet here. And then let's put that there. And that's how we gap shot, ladies and gents. And, uh, hand of God for good luck. No. Cool. We'll have those ones, though. So, if you haven't got any hand of God, you can really... I mean, that was my fault, to be fair. My button timing, I was going too fast for myself. And you can literally do that on every wave. That was probably, I don't know, 30 gap shots. So you can see how you can achieve 400, hopefully. Let's, um, these ones coming across from here are difficult at best to get multiple gap shots on. Yeah, that was rubbish. Fuck off. Fuck off. Ah, well, he's, they're not even the real prize. This is. I can hit him there, so. Ah, I've done it again. I hate that mechanic, I really do. So hopefully this will show you how many gap shots I could get, because I am not... doing very well with this mechanic at the moment, but we'll still get very high up in that leaderboard. No. Ah, no hand of gods. That could be a problem. You don't need hand of gods. But it does help. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get some leg shots here before they get too close. There we go. That's four. That's five. That's nothing. Six. Damn. Seven. Let's see if we can get, because you're not going to be able to get as many on him now. Because of the lack of slow time arrows. 
So let's do some full strength draw ones. Damn it. That was because of a cataclysm. No hand of gods again. I'm just going to stay sat down. There's no point getting up. Don't need to now. So yeah, just to... Show you. Come on. This is me now. I am sat down on my disgusting floor. <laughs> it needs a sweep. Archering. Might actually find, but again, you can get away with this. Could you get away with this in real life? No, because the bottom of the boat be touching the floor. So would you take a shot from seated? No, but this is VR. We can break the rules here. Hold for two. But as I said, what I'm what I'm hoping is you'll see how because it is reasonably easy. See how easy this is or can be to do, and then you can play with it in your own time to maximize the effect of all of this. Right, the toes. He loves it. Yeah. Cool. Don't get too carried away as well. You do need to be able to kill him before he gets to the exit. Otherwise, it's game over and all that work you just put in is for naught. <sighs> I mean, thing is, you could, Kim. You could. Right, we're not going to pick up anything other than the hand of God here. Keep that. See how we get on. I mean, I don't play anything seated. I mean, is sitting up going from standing continually to sitting on the floor? Is that really seated, though? Oh, if we stay standing here, though, we can get some additional gap shots on him as he comes through. He's probably got enough life that we can do that this time round. Uh, and again, if they are pissy shots... I mean, I will have that. I don't want Anakin anywhere near that circle when I start shooting him. And the reason being is because when he's being when he's in the circle, he takes increased damage. And that's going to stop us raining in all these pissy little gap shots. There we go. Can we get some more on his minions as well? Yeah. Got to make sure. Hello, man. How we doing? Hey, there we go. Oh. Hand of God. No. Regret filled with. Uh, just tempests. Not so great. Okay. Get the life. And back down, back down the hall. Right. Again, I don't mind doing full draws on those guys because they're going down in one anyway. So might as well get them out the way before we get swarmed.
you could if you were so inclined, but you would then put yourself at probably more of a disadvantage than an advantage, is you could manipulate your guardian space so that you are automatically put at this level, but I don't think it's worth it. Dude, I am very excited to put into the radius too. Of course I am. I'm going to be able to go out exploring with you, horrible lot. It'll be great. The tricks I'll play. Especially those who haven't seen or played the game before. It's going to be so fun. The thing, the one thing that I will say is... Especially when playing with a lot of you lot. The games don't even really have to be that good. I mean, you know, obviously Into the Radius ooh, has got a lot to live up to. Or well, Into the Radius 2. Just remembered about Cupid's. That's his head! It's his head! Um. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to start out as cooperative and then go for four player. And the thing that I find, especially with VR multiplayer games, is they don't even have to be that good. They just have to allow you to do things and just go off and do what you want to do. Or at least have adequate systems for you to have fun. I don't think they have to do an awful lot of work to make Into the Radius that sort of game. Just drop the cooperative into what they already have. But obviously they're going quite to town on a lot of things and features within the game so like one of the things that i i'm i'm umming and ahhing about is these new enemies and the textures that they're going to be putting on them i'd rather just fight the old mimics See, that's obviously a gap shot. Not a great one, but that's an ambush sniper elite. So that is a head, a, a trick, sh uh, a gap shot, headshot at sniper range, headshot. That's why the elite's there because it was a headshot. Um, but again, not worth a lot, an awful lot of points. Um, let's not do that. Right, back down the hole. Ugh. Yeah, my, my concern is I'm happy with just the enemies that are already in Into the Radius. I hope I would rather have a hundred of the old style mimics coming at me than there being a limit of, say, ten of the new style of enemies that they're doing because they look so much better. I, I like... I, I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong with the, uh, the old enemies. So, you know, obviously give them a little bit of a touch-up in graphics, but they don't need a lot. But it'll be interesting to see what they do do. Do you do? Oh, we can get some here. Let's see little weak shots. Loads of slow time. Every shot. All right, these ones. Normal. Gap shot hero. Oh, look at how look at how many adventuring days are over for him. <sighs> yeah, I'm I'll be honest with you. I'm trying to Oh, there we go. I'm trying to look at as little of that game as possible. I want to play the game. I don't want to get excited. I've thought about doing some videos on like my thoughts and the things that I'd want to see and do those bits and pieces. And I'm sure they do well, but then who's going to want to watch those videos once the game comes out? Once the game comes out and I start doing tips and tricks videos, they're going to be forever interesting to people that want tips and tricks for the game, which is... I don't know. <laughs> Reacting to things is something that content creators do. I'm just a simple video DJ. <laughs> Although I have considered it, because I do have some thoughts. Um, but then the thing is, I don't think I need to give my thoughts in one of the video uh, in a video on my channel, because hopefully I'll be able to chat directly to the devs and go, "Hey, have you considered this? Hey, have you thought about that?" 
I want mimics in that actually mimic teammates in the cooperative. And I want I I I'm want friendly fire within the game. Those are my only two main concerns. Oh, that was the wrong shot. Oh, no! I used my hand of God. Right, here we go. I need to be careful here that I don't die to the amount of enemies that are to my left. actually quite difficult shooting arrows from the floor properly. Damn it. So as you can see, scoring comparison to what you can do on this level, absolute garbage. Yes! Thank you. Just one at a time would be ideal. Hmm, so maybe thinking on, what I should be doing is I should be farming arrows on the first few waves and then maybe going to town on the gap shots later on. But uh, I'll do that if I don't get first. So. But again, so I'd like to think that me showing people this is repeatable which then means that you can score on that leaderboard too now i know the reason why i'm doing these leaderboards is it's quite low intensity work for the highest payout possible and by showing you guys how to do it as well i'm potentially making the work harder but you know that's uh <clears throat> that's just the way it is But then that's the thing, if I get knocked off by, you know, channel regulars, that will enhearten me greatly. Enhearten? Yeah, that word. I'll get you, bastard. Uh, da no, missed. Can I get that shot there? Oh, that's a waste. Um, I have played Tactical Assault VR. I'll be honest with you, Monk. I'm not a fan. I think... I think Onward is ten times better than that game. Wasn't actually that impressed with... There we go. And all the neat shots. Shit. That's okay, that'll probably help us. Uh, no. Get out of the way, Annie, you big old lummox. Damn. 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 One, two, come on. Yep. Hand of God. No! Oh. No! Fucking game. Um, I don't know. I don't. Have you played Mercenary Mode on uh, Onward? Or have you seen us playing Mercenary Mode on Onward? That's definitely my cup of tea. That's like, I like Onward, don't get me wrong, and I like a slow and tactical approach to games. I find Onward Mercenaries exactly what I want. The problem with tactical uh, VR for me is it's very much like here's some weapons, here's a level, off you go. And there's no like linkage between any of it. There's there's not really a lot 
to it other than get some guns, go into maps, shoot the guys, get out. It's not a massive variety in the different kinds of things that you can do. The other thing that I didn't like as well, and I know you can turn it off. Uh, okay, we... I really enjoy PvE, especially in a cooperative setting. Um, PvP, I will play. Obviously, we've got bloody showdown on the horizon, so I'm going to be playing a lot. Nope. So a cat through a gap shot. God, if anyone was listening to that, K2, why are you shooting cats from your bow and arrow exactly, Kim? <laughs> but I know what you're talking about. If you shoot a cataclysm arrow through an arch and kill or hit an enemy with that, that shot will count as a gap shot. The explosions, however, will count as a multi-kill, not a gap shot. So, because it's, um, it's the same way in that if you fired a hand of God through a gap and then killed enemies that go into that hand of God outside of the gap, they would not, although the hand of God was technically a gap shot, the shots that you got on it afterwards were not. Same with incursion. If I, if I laid an incursion through that, if I did this... If I put that incursion through there, well, then when that explodes, surely it should be a gap. All right. Sure, I thought I was being timed then. My money was disappearing. It's just catching up. If I shot a incursion through there, then, you know, the arrow is counted as a gap shot. So surely the explosion would be a gap shot, just like um, a cataclysm, you would think, would be as well. But no. Um... The one thing that you can do with incursions on that note is if I was to put an incursion all the way at the top there, if an enemy walked into it all the way at the top there, that would count as a sniper shot. That is actually a really good way to get the sniping shot achievement. There is an achievement which I think it is get 99... It's either 99 sniper shots or 99 long shots in a single map. Come here to do it. Put your incursions at the tops and in the backgrounds and then use Tempests for the rest. And then you actually have to do a lot less work. It's a very hard achievement to get that one, as it happens. Took me a while to get it. And then I went back at it later on and, and gained it, obviously. Because that's what I do. Uh, any chance for a hand of God here? Come on, come on, God, lend a hand! So, we're just coming into the last few rounds now. Now we have to be careful that we don't actually die. Well, that was a, that was a lucky shot if I ever saw one. Look at that timing. It's just mini golf that I can't time. Everything else, fine on. Just mini golf. Come on. There we go. Like, for instance, as well, to give you a, an example, another example as well, KT. If I shot that explosive skull and got a gap shot in him then surely the explosion from the skull would also count as gap shots but they don't either the other thing as I mentioned earlier with oh, you bastard. Fuck that up. the other thing that I mentioned earlier with multi shots uh, multiple uh, kills multi kills that's what I was looking for. Could do with some headshots here and some cupid farmings. Hand of God, yes! Oh, that's two. Two lucky headshots for a lucky boy! Yeah. Cataclysm, fuck off. 
<sighs> right, wave 14. Well, at least we got a hand of God. We'll pop that in there. We'll get rid of that. Yep. Ah. Uh, ah, you know what? We shouldn't get rid of that, should we? That was a waste. So, in this mode, it is highly likely that a lot of enemies are going to get past me and get to that gate. Because I'm concentrating on gap shots, I can't concentrate on the gate at the same time as well. So putting your incursions down over there is actually quite a good idea. But again, as I'm finding out with how I'm gaming the slow time side of things, do try and empty your quiver before you go into the level, because otherwise you'll just end up bin in low... I've wasted so many Hand of Gods on doing this. Oh, hang on, before I get sat down. Change the old bat to one But yeah, as far as, as I was saying earlier, as far as multi-kills are concerned, you would be better off killing... Killing 20 enemies in one arrow counts as one multi-kill. Killing... Uh, 10 lots of groups of two enemies counts as 10 multi-kills. So that's the way that you want to game that system. You want to kill them in small groups, because then you actually get multi-kills for each of them. Oh, you bastard. Hmm. Getting rid of you before you become a problem. There's Anakin 2 on the way. Damn. Come on, it's Anakin that we want. His adventuring days are so over. Where's she? There she is. Alright, let's try not to die, shall we? Alright, that'll kill all of those. Oh, get out of the way, you lummox! You have to be quick here, because Anakin needs killing. Yeah. My arm. Right, last one. Hand of God. Yes! Could have done with two, really. But um, Yep, nothing else, obviously. We've got a Tempest there just in case as well. Let's grab the health. Let's try not to die. The other thing with doing this as well is even if you do die, it doesn't actually matter because it will record the amount of gap shots that you have collected during the run, whether you die or not. So you don't have to survive, but obviously, you know, if you can survive to the end and be gap shot in all the way there, then you're going to have more gap shots than somebody who only made it to wave eight. Or so you would hope.
still got to not die. Uh. <clears throat> This is a lot of enemies. We've got cataclysms though, so we should be okay. Oh, and there's a very helpful one of those. Um, it's a bit risky, but we are here for gap shots. Oh, that'll do. Right, let's see how he did. What do you reckon? I've had over 400 previously. And as I said, I'm not gaming that enough. If you, as I said, if you duck and land a Hand of God there on every single Anakin. We ran out because I was trying to manipulate the slow time too quickly and ended up changing arrows. So if you can make a point of getting your Hand of Gods from Cupid, you can grab them as you need them and then can really go to town on the gap shots. There you go, 577. That kind of blows everybody out of the water as far as gap shots. I am the champion of gap shots, for now. And I didn't manipulate that anywhere near as much as I could have. Now you people know how to do it too. I expect to see you all up there very soon. If somebody can top my score, let me know. I would love it if you can come along and just repeat what I've done and beat my score. That's the whole reason why I do these live streams and give away all of my tips and tricks and various bits and pieces because I want to be beaten. I great, take great pleasure in the fact of showing off a thing and then having it used against me better than I can do it because... There's always somebody better out there than you, and if you can give them the techniques that allow them to excel, well, you can get a little glory out of that, I guess. So, right. What time are we on? 11? Mm. Yeah, there is that. There is that. It does need something to bring it, us back into it. I'm hoping that it'll be in Death Unchained 2, that's they are super bright i have been reliably informed by beanie he was in the stream earlier has told us that super bright are working on things but i mean they're a big company with a very pop successful and big game or was at the very least or maybe not big but with a fanatical player base that want to throw money at super bright and you know they have employees and they have a team and they're working on things why do we not know what they are working on. Why is it being kept a secret? Is it true? Are they actually working on things? Are we going to see any more updates for this game? I'd love to say that I know, and if I did, I probably would spill the beans on it, but there's only one man that can spill the beans, and he knows nothing. And on that bombshell, we shall end it there. So this has been In Death Unchained on the Quest 3 Native. I have been Silver Tongue Devil. Good night.